Hello and welcome to my talk about my cycling journey. I'm Rebecca and I absolutely love cycling. This is my first time presenting about cycling, so apologies if it jumps around a bit. I've tried to order it chronologically, but because there's so many different types of cycling I've done, I've added bits in other places where I thought they would fit better. So a bit of background about me. I've done most types of cycling over the years, from road and track and cyclocross and mountain biking to things like tandeming. And I've done a bit of coaching, coaching other young riders too. I've been in a cycling club for 10 years now. I started at Cycle Derby and then moved on to the University of Nottingham Cycling Club before joining Leicester Forest last year. I grew up in Leicester and graduated from the University of Nottingham last year with a degree in civil engineering. And now I'm working for a Leicester based company in a highways team and I've been there about six months. I enjoy sharing bits and pieces of my cycling on social media and have a YouTube channel, which I set up in the first lockdown. In this presentation, I'll talk a bit about my childhood cycling and my time as a youth rider and moving on to the stuff I've done in more recent years, which will be the main focus because it's the most interesting part of my cycling. So back to the beginning. This is me on my trike. I'm not sure how old I was there, but the photo on the right is my first proper bike, which I got when I was three. I had a fairly typical childhood in terms of cycling. I'm not sure how long it took me to learn to ride that first bike, but I soon moved on to my brother's old bike, which was slightly bigger, before getting a bigger mountain bike when I was about seven. And then when I was 10, I got my first kind of proper bike, which was a pink and red, pink and white rally, which I spent a lot of time on. I used to ride to my grandma's and back at the weekends with the rest of my family. And I remember a trip to Carsington Water when I was probably 10 or 11. I also did lots of laps of where we live on that bike, going round and round without a clue of how far I was going because I didn't have a bike computer at that point. And then the picture on the right is on my brother's BMX, which I enjoyed playing on too. And I just thought it was a cute photo that I found when I was sorting through things to include in this presentation. I also remember this was the first bike I crashed on. I'm sure I crashed on the others, but this was the first bike I remember crashing on. We were coming back from my grandma's house through the park and I went on the grass to overtake a pedestrian before crashing as I went back onto the pavement. Then what changed? The London 2012 Olympics happened. And I don't remember being inspired by the Olympics myself, but my brother was, and he wanted a road bike. So we went to a taster session at Cycle Derby in the city centre where they closed a bit of the pedestrian area and had bikes to hire out so that we could try them. And I absolutely loved it. And that had quite a good turnout. So they decided they'd set up a children's cycling club which I was desperate to go to, and I did. So we joined Cycle Derby, and the only reason we really joined them rather than Leicester Forest is because we didn't know Leicester Forest at the time, and they didn't have such a big youth section like they do now. So in my first few months of Cycle Derby, I had lots of fun riding around in a park with my brother and some new friends, and learning new skills and bike handling. And then in the winter, we went inside and I learned how to ride rollers, which are a cool, is a cool kind of device that has three cylinders and enables you to train inside whilst balancing and practicing your balance. So that's what the photo on the right is. I didn't have many photos from that time, but that is Christmas morning when I got a new set of rollers. And the bike I'm riding in that photo is my brother's because mine was too dirty at the time. And then, the next summer I started racing we did some races at the club which were kind of fun local with not many people and the photo on the left is the first race I did I was the only one in my age category so technically I won and I've still got the medal to prove that but I was beaten my, by my brother so I wasn't happy about that and then I took up cyclocross which is kind of cross-country running on a bike in fields in the winter through the mud and also going over hurdles 
and getting off to run upstairs and stuff. And I also did a bit of road racing, although at that age, it was just on a closed road circuit. So now I'll just briefly skim through the different types of racing and things I did at Cycle Derby, starting with cyclocross. The photo on the left was a snowy race in Bakewell one year, and that was pretty fun, although it did turn to slush pretty quickly. The second photo is, was one of my favorite photos for a long time. I had just moved up to the adults category, so racing for an hour, and it was the first race I got a mechanical in. I had my dad's bike, which was the same size as mine, and we took it with us as a pit bike because there are pits that you can change bike in or change parts in case you get a mechanical or if it's too muddy and you just want to change to a clean bike. But at that time, I was inexperienced and I decided that I didn't need a pit bike. So we left it on the car and then I snapped my chain and had to run half a lap to the pits which also gave my dad enough time to get the bike off the car so I could finish the race on it. The photo on the right is another race I had a mechanical in. It was the year I was going to university open days in September, which meant I hadn't done many races so far and that was my first race of the season. I really wanted a good race. And then I snapped my chain on the start line, but the rules say you have to change in the pits. So despite not actually crossing the start line, because I had already got a mechanical at this point, I had to run half a lap to the pits. Now, I remember because the start was up a hill and halfway up this hill, I was running really fast and I wasn't actually last, but there was still a long way to the pits. And by the time I got there, I definitely was last. But as the race went on and I switched bikes and carried on riding, I started overtaking people in the last few laps. So I didn't actually finish last, which was good and quite impressive really. And I remember because the first thing my coach said to me once I had finished the race was that was brilliant. And I thought it definitely wasn't, but I could see where he was coming from because it was early on in the season. A lot of the youth riders from my club had stayed to watch me and they saw what not giving up looked like. Another time I did cycle across the cycle derby, I decided to enter one of the national races at, that was in Derby. And that was a bit of a mistake. I crashed in the first lap and never really recovered from that. But it was definitely an experience. Looking back, I'd say I wasn't quite ready to race at that level, but it was still fun. And the courses were slightly more technical than the local races I had been doing previously. I did a bit of road racing at Cycle Derby, mainly because it was so local. A lot of the races in Leicester are at Mallory Park. So I did a couple of races early on, and then the rule came in that you weren't allowed disc brakes for youth racing. So I stopped racing for a while before actually buying a road bike, which meant I could race again. And also the rules had changed at that point. And then when I was 16, I got a mountain bike for my birthday. And that was the second bike I owned at the time because I only owned a cyclocross bike, which I could use for both road and cyclocross by switching the tires or the wheels. I didn't really ride my mountain bike as much as I should. I only went to Hicks Lodge in Ashby a couple of times, but then I saw about the Friday night summer series, which is a local mountain bike racing series in Leicestershire and Northamptonshire. Because I had experience of racing cyclocross, I thought I would be okay to give it a go. And I was. The photo on the left was my first race. And I remember being so nervous about it because I didn't know anybody or know what to expect. But slowly I learned to get quicker on the bike by letting go of the brakes and going a bit faster. I also tried the Midlands mountain bike series, which is another level up from the local Friday night races. And these races are an hour and a half, which is a very long time. I did the first race and there were a couple of people in my category, so it was okay. But a lot of the races, there aren't many women. And because they're split by ability category anyway, 
it's not very competitive after the start because as soon as the other people get ahead of you you can't really see them for the rest of the race and it's kind of like an individual time trial around a mountain bike track but because there were so few women I did all the races that season and although I finished last in I think pretty much all of them I also finished on the podium in pretty much all of them including this race that I won because I was the only one in my category although it was still a tough race because it was the hottest day of that year. Cycle Derby also gave me the opportunity to do track cycling when the velodrome opened in Derby, which was very fun. I didn't race track, but I did enjoy riding it as a youth rider. I learned how to ride it from not being able to ride it quite early on. And then I did things like Madison, which is where you handsling your partner into the race which was a pretty cool thing to learn. And it made you feel a lot faster than just riding individually. So I wanted to share some other photos from my time at Cycle Derby before I finish talking about this section. The one on the left is me and my brother training for a training camp that we used to go on at Cycle Derby uh, for a weekend away in the Peak District. So that was the first year my brother was going. So we went out training all winter to make sure he could cover the distance, which wasn't too far, but it was quite hilly. The second photo is a photo on holiday in Lincolnshire. We only took the bikes on the back of the car, so it wasn't a proper cycling holiday, but I did enjoy riding in new places. And the third photo is a cycling top I made in my GCSE textiles project, which I think just shows how much cycling involved and impacted in other areas of my life. And finally, this last photo, which was a race I'll never forget, because it was the first time someone told me they wanted to be like me when they were older. This little girl was probably eight or nine at the time, and I was 15 or 16. And it amazed me how someone could think they wanted to be like me when I wasn't doing anything special, just riding and racing my bike and having fun on it. I also did a bit of coaching at the end of my cycle derby time. I did the British Cycling Award for Young Volunteers, which enabled me to do some volunteering with British Cycling in the summer holidays at the holiday kind of sessions that I used to enjoy riding. I did my level two as soon as I was old enough, at just turned 18, and then did some more discipline specifics such as sight across road and track. The photo on the left is one of my favourite photos is at the let's ride event in Leicester where they close the roads and let cyclists take over. I really enjoyed these days because they were coaching people who didn't usually ride bikes and coaching them skills that would help them to continue enjoy riding bikes in the future. I also got the opportunity to learn how to ride a tandem and pilot for a visually impaired rider in 2016. A tandem handles, handles quite similarly to a solo bike, which surprised me. It just feels a bit faster with a bigger turning radius. I went on the tandem on the track and then my second ride on the road tandem was the national champs in, in Darley Moor in Derbyshire in 2016. We came fourth and raced against Steve Bate and Adam Duggably who then went on to win at the Rio Paralympics. So that was pretty cool. I loved learning to ride a tandem and it taught me lots of important skills, such as communication and how to communicate effectively to ensure that it's safe and effective riding. Then this is where it jumps around a bit because these aren't photos from that time but they're photos from other sessions that I got the opportunity to help and coach at with British Cycling. So I learned to ride a hand cycle, which was very fun. It feels a lot faster than a normal bike, I think because it's closer to the ground. The trike I really struggled with, mainly because I could barely reach the brakes. And also it was a slightly uneven surface, which made it slightly wobbly. I didn't ride it very far. And then in 2019, I got the opportunity to ride a Ride Leicester cargo bike, which was also quite hard to ride. 
I rode it around the city centre of Leicester. And the reason I was allowed to ride that bike was because they thought nothing could fall out of it. But I accidentally lost, uh, made one wheel fall off the bike path we were riding on and everything toppled out. But I got used to it a bit. You just need to steer it a bit more with your hands rather than using your body weight to allow the bike to move. And then in 2020, I bought an elephant bike, which is one of the old Royal Mail bikes with a basket on the front and panniers on the back. It's quite heavy, but also quite useful. And I really like the flat basket on the front because it makes carrying other stuff a bit easier compared to panniers. I don't use it as much as I should because I now have a pannier rack on my road bike for commuting to work, but it is my most popular YouTube video. A lot of my riding as a youth rider was racing or short rides. So my first 100 kilometers was when I was about 18 or 19 and I did three laps of Rutland water with my dad on the gravel tracks, which was quite fun. Although it was quite hard because it was gravel and slow. We stopped for a sandwich in the car after each lap. And then I went to university and joined the university club. In 2019, I went to Belgium and did the Liège Baston Liège Sportive, which is still one of the hardest rides I've ever done because it was so cold and so wet. It was also the longest ride I'd done and the hilliest ride I'd done at that point, which made it even harder. And then I did some cyclocross at university, which was one of the main reasons I went to Nottingham University because it's local and I could still race the local races. I got better at cyclocross on my time at university, mainly because I was riding more and getting stronger anyway. The photo on the left was one of my favourite photos. It was a race in the Leicestershire League where I came second. And it was one of the only races my brother came to watch. And it proved to him that I wasn't too bad at riding bikes. The photo in the middle is probably the muddiest race I've done, where we had to get off and run through the mud. And you can see it splashing quite high. The season before COVID, and I was quite unlucky with mechanicals. All three photos on this slide are from that year. In the two races at Misserton Hall, I got a puncture, one which included quite a long run to the pits because of where on the course I got a puncture. But I ran and walked a bit and swapped bikes and then carried on. The photo on the right is probably the funniest mechanical I had. I noticed that my shoe was a bit loose on one of the laps. And these cycling shoes have kind of plastic laces, a bit like tennis racket strings. So when I looked closer, I could see that it had actually snapped because they're tightened with a dial and the plastic had just frayed all the way. So although it was quite hard to ride, I was riding along okay. And then I caught my biggest rival on the penultimate lap. So I was kind of following her and I pulled my foot a bit too hard on one of the corners and it just came out of the shoe. Although the shoe was still attached to the pedal because they had clip in pedals. Now I decided that I'd try and do a triathlon style where you put your shoe back on while you're riding, but it was a bit too muddy and a bit bumpy and I didn't have the skills to that. So I just left it until I had to get off and run anyway. I didn't catch my rival. And the only thing, good thing to come out of that race was that it happened right in front of a photographer, which is how I got the cool photo. I also did a bit of road racing during my time at university, mainly racing at Mallory Park and also Harvey Haddon in Nottingham. Although I didn't take my mountain bike to university, during the summer, I still did mountain bike races, but only the Friday night series, nothing bigger or trickier than that. The photo on the left is probably the muddiest mountain bike race I've done and also one I crashed in. I came to the bottom of a hill and I could see one of the riders had already crashed. And in trying to avoid him, I just ended up on the ground as well. The photo on the right is last year 
when I actually won a mountain bike race. And I beat quite a few people in this race. It wasn't like before where I was winning because I was the only one in my category. I was second for most of that race and within about half a lap of the finish, I finally caught the rider ahead of me. As I've got older, I've also done more mountain biking in other places such as Cannock Chase and Sherwood Pines. But both of these photos are from Western Park in Leicester where I enjoyed riding down the ramps and trying to get a bit of air and jump a bit, but I'm not very good at that, it's quite scary. And then we reached 2020 in lockdown. I got a new bike in January of 2020, although my birthday's in April and it was a birthday present, so I didn't ride it until April. You see, I'd been having a bit of trouble with my old bike and it was squeaking a bit, but the guy in the bike shop couldn't find out what was wrong with it because it would only squeak when I was actually riding it. It wasn't making any noise or showing any indication of what was wrong with it when it was on the bike stand. But by the time he'd figured out what was wrong with it and how to fix it, he'd also convinced me to buy a new bike. I also set up a YouTube channel at the start of the lockdown, which was a way for me to document the rides I was doing, as well as sharing some old videos that I'd already made. And then I did a bit of studying and some exams, and then decided to go on a bit of a local adventure, riding over every motorway bridge on the map of Leicester and Hinkley, which is what I was plotting in the photo on the left with the map although it is quite an old map and I had to draw some extra ones on. And the photo of the right is the last bridge we rode over in Thurliston. Now my brother came with me on this trip because it wasn't too far. We only did about a hundred miles over three days and I split it. So the ride, the first ride we did everything on the M1 north of where we live. The second ride we did all the bridges south on the M1 of south of where we live. And the third ride, we did the M69, which only has a few bridges on anyway. So that was fun. And it was the first video and post that I really posted on Twitter that got quite a bit of attention. It got called a pleasingly bonkers idea for a bike ride by the adventurer Alistair Humphreys. So that was pretty cool. Following on from that, we decided we needed another Bikes and Bridges adventure. So did every road bridge over the Ashby Canal, which was also fun. Although these were smaller and more rural roads with more humped and bridge, uh, bricked bridges. Again, it took three days and I did it with my brother. And the Ashby Canal is only 22 miles long, but it took us over a hundred miles to do all of the bridges because of the way we had to zigzag. It also meant that we were turning around a lot more after going over the bridge because to go around and find the next road without turning around would have taken far too long. And then in the summer of 2020, I was awarded one of the 100 Women in Cycling by Cycling UK as recognition for the coaching and other things I'd done to encourage young people to get into cycling. On the left, a couple of years previously, I'd also been involved in the British Cycling One in a Million campaign, which was another campaign to try and get more women into cycling. That's me in the bottom left-hand corner of the poster, but I also featured in their video. And then after I'd finished my exams, and with a bit more time, I decided to go on an even bigger adventure that was still local, A to Z by bike, visiting one place beginning with every letter of the alphabet, apart from X, because that's impossible, um, in alphabetical order over a week. Most of them were in Leicestershire, although I did visit Yelvertoft in Northamptonshire and use the Vale of Beaver for the letter V. That was one of my favourite rides because it was Sunday, I think, and there were quite a lot of other cyclists sat. But I also spoke to a lot more cyclists that day. I spoke to one cyclist as I was heading out quite early on, and he asked me how far I'd been and how, where I was going. 
So when I told him, he said, oh, I've done that far too, but I'm going home now. Whereas I was like 10 miles into a 60 mile ride. And then I spoke to a guy with some horses as I stopped for a snack in the middle of the ride. And I was also talking to someone as I rode back through over the hills by Bradgate Park, which was quite nice because I was quite tired and it kept me going over the last bit of the ride. And then things went quiet for a while. I went back to uni and I had also done a virtual summer placement. And then I decided that I wanted to do some more roller tricks. I'd already played the flute and the keyboard whilst riding the rollers and did jingle bells on the flute and the 12 days of Christmas on the keyboard a couple of years previously. But then I had the great idea that I should do a song every day of December up until Christmas. And I talked myself out of it a bit, but then another lockdown was announced and I realized this was gonna be the best chance I'd have when I had the most time. So I learned and memorized 24 Christmas songs and split them between playing them on the flute and the keyboard whilst posting them on YouTube and Twitter every day. It made me happy that it made a lot of people smile particularly people who weren't actually cyclists or had any interest in cycling. And I got lots of feedback that people were looking forward to it each day. Among the rollers videos, I also did a bit of Strava art, trying to make a reindeer. Now, this was one of the first pieces of Strava art I did, and I'd never really considered it before this. But back in the first lockdown, I wanted to extend my route that went to Market Bosworth slightly further north. So I just plotted it to see how long it would be. And as I plotted it, I realized that it was starting to look a bit like a llama. So I added some legs and thought, oh yeah, I'll do this. And then I thought, even though it was the middle of June, if I add some antlers, I can make it a reindeer. So I did, although the place the antlers were, were in Heather. And there's not many other roads around there apart from the main roads. So I kind of accepted it looked a bit like a helicopter propeller and added it to my route. I also added a red nose and then waited until nearer Christmas to be able to ride it. And I did, and I really enjoyed that. And it also got quite a bit of attention on Twitter. So I thought, oh, maybe I should plot some more. But that's the end of 2020. So I plotted an Easter bunny around my usual routes of Market Bosworth, which made it quite easy to plot because I could um, remember what things looked like. And I was particularly impressed that I got a little tail in, which used a bit of a bike path link from Hinkley to Barwell which was nice and it was also a nice sunny day although I did get a puncture that day but it didn't slow me down too much and then in the summer of 2021 I bought a new bike very much inspired by Danny McCaskill the YouTube rider who does tricks and stuff I bought a trials bike which as you can see has no saddle and has quite small wheels it was a bit of a random purchase because Danny McCaskill had just released a new video. So I was very inspired and bought a bike on eBay. I used it a lot during the first few weeks because I was doing a university group project, which meant that they were quite intense days of studying, followed by a bit of a break in my lunch to go out in the garden and practice. It took me quite a while to get used to it particularly learning how to lift the front wheel because I don't have much upper body strength. So I was using my position on the bike to pull the front wheel up by pulling everything else back rather than just trying to do it using my arms. I haven't ridden it much since then, but I do intend on getting it back out soon. And then after I finished uni and that group project, I decided I'd ride to every place in Leicestershire because I had five weeks off between finishing my last university project and starting work properly. So I made a, a spreadsheet of all the places in Leicestershire and then 
organized them by postcode and started planning, which was just scribbling on maps, as you can see here. I kind of added boundaries of roads I wanted to avoid either riding along or zigzagging over and continuously having to cross, which were mainly the main roads, and then just plotted a route somewhere between them, trying to cover as many places as I could before going back and plotting it properly, checking that I hadn't missed any places off. So I decided that I'd ride from kind of the northwest of Leicestershire anti-clockwise until I got back to having ridden every place in Leicestershire. So I split it into seven rides, split over nine days so that I could have some rest days in the middle because some of them were quite long. So day one was 125 miles, which was the longest ride I had done at that point. But it was quite a nice day. And I set off really early because my brother was also leaving for somewhere quite early. So I wasn't even the first one out of the house when I left at like seven o'clock in the morning. And then the second day I did 106 miles. And then I had a rest day in between that and day three, which was 130 miles and my longest ride again which went out towards Market Harbour and zigzagged around there. And then ride four was 110 miles, which was a lovely day. That was another weekend day because I remember seeing a lot of people that I knew either from Nottingham kind of heading south out on their bikes or other riders that I knew from Leicestershire. And then I had another rest day. And day five was probably the ride I was most scared about which was 126 miles. So it wasn't the furthest ride I did, but it was kind of the most direct route with less zigzagging. So at the furthest point, I'd be the furthest away from home, um, which I was a bit worried that if I got a mechanical or something, I wouldn't be able to fix it, but it all went smoothly. And then ride six was 103 miles, which was probably the hardest day because it was the day I was most tired. Although I did enjoy riding past East Midlands Airport and seeing all the planes. I didn't include Ride 7 on a route on here, but it basically took in the last few places in Leicestershire that I just didn't fit into any of the other rides, which were Glenfield, Burstall and Wanlip. And it was mainly because they were quite close to the city centre. And by the time I had plotted the other rides, I didn't at the end of the rides when I was heading home, I didn't want to be adding in extra places and extending the distance any further. So I did that on ride seven and we also visited a couple of other places in the city, such as the football stadium, the rugby stadium and the schools I went to. Um, and day seven was a day my brother joined me for a ride because it was about 30 miles. So then here are some photos from my trip. I really enjoyed it and because it was quite a challenge even the distance without considering where I was going I decided I'd do some fundraising for World Bicycle Relief who are a charity that spend money and provide bikes to girls and women in developing countries to enable them to get to school and work a bit easier so I raised over a thousand pounds for them because I was sharing my journey as I went along, which is something I'd never done before. I'd always done the adventure and then shared it once I'd finished it, whereas this I shared it after every day. And this is one of the rides that doesn't have a YouTube video associated with it yet because I'm still editing it. But there are videos of all the photos I took because I stopped at every single place with the place sign next to my bike, with my bike next to it. This also taught me quite a lot about my riding because it was the most challenging rides I've ever done and also continuously doing it two days in the on a row um it taught me a lot about how to fuel my rides I generally only took sandwiches and snacks I didn't stop anywhere else um and also about riding through the dips in motivation and just trying to realize whether I was hungry or just tired and also knowing that as soon as I reach the next place and start che checking more places off the list, I'd start feeling better again. Um, but it was a good adventure to take place between finishing my university degree and starting work. I had thought about doing something like Land's End, John O'Groats, but with the COVID, 
and not knowing how it would go it was just easier to do something where I was based at home and it also taught me a lot about places in Leicestershire that I really didn't know much about like a lot of places I hadn't been to before or some of them I hadn't even heard of but some of them I had just driven through and that was it I learned that Fenny Drayton kind of west of Market Bosworth is the geographic center of England which was quite interesting and I also saw the smallest church in one of the other villages which was very cool and then after that obviously I had to do another county so I picked Rutland because it's the smallest and the nearest and there's less places in Rutland than I visited on a day in Leicestershire although it did take me about half of my riding on these two days to actually get to Rutland. So the first day I did almost 130 miles and that was a hilly day too. I tried to tick off every place kind of north of Rutland water. And then the second day, I tried to do it the day after I'd done the first day all in a weekend, but I didn't even make it to Rutland, I was so tired. So I did it the weekend after and that was 108 miles. That day, I also saw Welland Viaduct, which looked really impressive and it was very exciting as an engineer. I'd driven past it before, but I'd never really stopped and appreciated how big it was or how good it looked. So as I mentioned earlier, I graduated last year. And although it was a virtual graduation, I had a lovely day celebrating with friends and family. And a couple of days before, I'd been posing for photos in Nottingham and I thought I should do another rollers video of me basically tossing a hat. In the end, I decided I'd do one where I started with a helmet, switched to a hard hat because I had a hard hat for my degree, although I hardly wore it, and then switched to a graduation cap with the kind of voiceover that went, that isn't the right hat for today until I got to the graduation hat. So I posted it on Twitter and Instagram and it got over a million views on Instagram. I'm not really quite sure why, but I thought that was quite impressive and it shared what look, riding on rollers looked like to a lot of people who had never heard of rollers or weren't actually cyclists. And then having settled down in Leicester with my new job, I joined Leicester Forest. I had thought about joining Leicester Forest before I went to university, when I was getting a bit too old for Cycle Derby, but knowing I would be joining the university club, I didn't bother. But I did after I finished uni and I got some kit and raced cyclocross for them. And then it was Halloween and I thought about doing a pumpkin shaped ride. I plotted this about six weeks before Halloween and it took me a lot longer because, than the other ones because these aren't areas I ride regularly, kind of south of Leicester and towards Market Harborough. And when I plotted it, I thought it looked good. And then I went off it a bit and thought, actually, this isn't good enough to ride. Until a few days before Halloween, I realised if I coloured it in, it would look a lot better. So I tested it using an app and like the paint bucket tool to colour it in easily and thought, oh, OK, this looks good enough. I'll ride this. And it was about 108 miles in total. And because I, there was only a limited time I could do it before Halloween, I picked a day that it was raining in the morning. So it was quite a hard ride because I got wet early on, but then it got easier as the weather brightened up in the afternoon. So now onto the cyclocross season. Having missed the season for COVID, I was very happy to be back and racing in new colours. It was also good because I got a lot of support from Leicester Forest riders who I hadn't met before and got to know through the cyclocross season because I've still not made it out for a club ride. My favourite races this season were the snowy race in Derby for the East Midlands champs because it was snowing, although it was a very hard race and a very cold race. The snow provided lots of cool photos and also the photo on the right which was the last race of the season at Misserton Hall where I came second. I got a really good start and was leading for about the first half of that where I got overtaken by a rider who has beaten me all season. So I was really happy with that. 
It was also good to end the season on a high. At one of the cyclocross races this season, I also saw the Leicester Wheels for all people because they were there with their bikes and I really enjoyed riding and trying some of them. I particularly enjoyed riding this trike because I found it a lot easier than the British cycling racing trike that I had tried in previous years, mainly because it was a bit more upright with smaller wheels, which made it a lot easier and a lot more stable. And then for Christmas, I wanted to do another Strava art ride. However, this one took me ages to plot because I couldn't find anything Christmassy anywhere. So I started looking further afield before settling on a Christmas tree with the tip towards the Leicester Tigers ground, which meant that I could use all the roads in the city centre to form a star. Because a lot of the other rides I had done had been very rural, it had meant that there'd only been kind of one or two roads that I could choose that are fairly parallel to ride along. But in the city centre, I had plenty of roads to choose to make my star. Although it almost got ruined because the top of the star used a bit of the Abbey Park path, which was closed at the time. Although I did find a route around it. And then a shorter ride I did one that spelled out 2022 for the new year, which was and something I, it, that took long to plan. I just came across it while I was scrolling around Google Maps. So this year, I know it's March, but this year has gone very quickly and I feel like I've hardly done anything. Most of my riding this year has been indoors on the bike in the garage, riding on Zwift, the virtual training platform which like on the road, I've been enjoying exploring new places because I only invested in it this year. So a lot of it is all very new to me. I've also done a lot of commuting this year because it's the first year I've been riding to work. Now there would have been a photo here if I had remembered to take one yesterday because I wasn't in the office today, um, but I didn't. I for completely forgot that I needed a photo of me commuting and it's not something I would usually take a photo of. But I've really enjoyed commuting. And I think I was quite lucky because I missed the worst of the winter when we were told to stay at home. Perhaps the most exciting thing I've done this year hasn't been on two wheels at all. I bought a unicycle and have been learning to ride that. Earlier in the year, I received a reward from work for a bit of work that was the main project I was working on at the time and decided I wanted to spend it on something memorable. So I bought a unicycle. I had considered buying a unicycle last year, but changed my mind and bought the trials bike instead. It ar arrived on a Wednesday, which was the day I was in the office. So I didn't ride it that day, but I got it set up. And then on Thursday and Friday, when I work at home, I used my lunch break to practice along the side of the house, using the wall as a bit of a guide and support. And then on Saturday, I took it out into the main bit of the back garden where I could just try and ride it solo. I had been warned on Twitter that it would take me a long time to get past the first few pedal strokes. So I spent all day practicing and by the end of the day, I could just about make it from one end of the garden to the other on my own. So then I took it out on the pavements around where we live, using my dad for support to hold his hand and make sure I wasn't gonna fall off. And then I got the confidence to try it on a flat bit of path near where we live. I usually practiced in the dark because it was winter. And by the time I'd got home from work or finished work and got out, it was dark, so that's what the photo on the right is. That was the first day I made it the whole length along that little stretch of path, using the lamppost to get started because I still can't start on my own and ride along. I've been practicing a lot since then. And although I haven't been riding it very far, I've been practicing going over the speed bumps, trying to learn how to shift my weight accordingly without falling off. Although a couple of weeks ago, I did have my worst crash on it going up a speed bump where I just fell backwards and the uni 
cycle continued rolling around on the road, although it wasn't a very busy road and I wasn't hurt, so I have been on it since. Then I went to the Leicester Forest Awards evening, where I picked up two trophies, the women's cyclocross and the under 23 ladies mountain biking. Mainly because I was the only person in these categories that raced for Leicester Forest. But I had a lovely evening meeting new members and learning about other members' achievements over the past year. And it's the mountain bike season already. At the beginning of March, I did my first race of the season at Sherwood Pines. Because I'd had a few seasons off from the Midlands Mountain Bike League and the long races, I thought it was time to give it a go back. Mainly because the women's race had changed so all the women were racing together. And there were a lot of women entered. So it would have been quite a competitive race anyway. I ended up coming 13th out of 36, which was a really good result for me. And I really enjoyed it. So I entered another mountain bike race. This one was up north in a quarry and it was hard, very hard. There weren't as many women in the race to start with, which meant there would be more spaced out. But also it was so hilly and the bits that weren't hilly were so technical, fast and rocky descents. I had been warned about this, but I thought, oh, it can't be that bad. And I was wrong. It was really bad because I'm not a very technical rider. I just don't have the confidence or ability to let go of fear that easily. But I gave it a go and I'm proud of that. Although I did finish last because I got a decent start and there were a few riders behind me, but they didn't finish, which meant I ended up finishing last. Although it did mean that I had some pretty photos. And finally, I'll just talk a bit about the link to civil engineering from my perspective, because I think there is quite a large link, or at least for me there is. I really enjoy being able to go out on my bike and look at things that I've been learning about through my work, even if they aren't in the same location or actual projects that I'm working on. I've Since I started, I've been looking at tactile paving and road markings and crash barriers and things like that that are a bit easier to see when you're going a bit slower on a bike because you could see it in the car, but you're going a bit too quickly to pay any attention to the detail, which is something I've been really interested in learning about. The photo on the left is just my new little valve caps, the little Lego engineers with a hard hat, which I thought were quite cool because there's not many women in my office in the engineering bit. So I thought it was quite nice to have on my commuting bike, a little reminder, although my hard hat isn't red. There's also the bike path element of civil engineering. Now, I've not done much of this, but I do have quite a collection of bike path videos on YouTube because it's so useful to be able to see things that aren't on street view through GoPro footage. I have started learning about designing bike paths. And in 2020, in the lockdown, I did some online courses about it. But now I'm actually designing it through local authority guidelines about widths and locations, which is very interesting. The one of the other things I've done since I've been at, in working in the civil engineering company, which links quite nicely to how I plan my cycling routes, is looking at Google Street View. Now, if I'm planning a long route, I like to have a decent idea of what type of roads I'll be riding on. So I generally go around with it on Street View first, or at least have a look at every road if I don't want to have a look at the whole stretch. But in my job, I spent quite a while looking at the same thing, but for a construction traffic route and seeing whether or not big lorries and abnormal loads would fit down little rural roads, which even included a site visit to go and see some roads. So finally, what's next for me? I have some plans for this year, although nothing set in stone with routes planned. 
I'd like to continue some of the ideas and themes of rides that I've done in the past, as well as having more fun on my unicycle and learn to ride it further and faster, as well as some road races and some more mountain bike races. Thank you for listening. If you'd want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter or YouTube, there are the details. Apart from that, that is the end of my presentation. So if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Rebecca. That was really, really so enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>